nice black pair of course with uh, with a nice gold side there's a few colorways that you that they do you always got to get a, a pair of black adidas shoes haven't you really oh so adidas running shoes now i've got a bit of a history with these back in about 2010 i was getting a bit frustrated with using the nikes at the time i think i was in the zoom elite so getting a bit wide uh, maybe i'm just looking for something a bit better so i walked into the Sweatshop in Tennington, perhaps one of the most uh, well-known running shops in the country. I was going to live quite near there. And um, after trying on a few pairs, I walked out with a pair of shoes called the Adidas Boston. I think they've been around for a while, but this is in the sort of pre-boost area. And they were sort of like a lightweight racer trainer type affair. So I quite got on with them and I started doing all my uh, regular training in them. And I also found the Adios uh, racing flats, which at the time were also pre-boost. I had a nice green pair, I think I seem to remember. And uh, I was doing all my sort of races from uh, 5Ks up to half marathons in them. And I even in the end, in the Adios run my last uh, marathon before the one I did the other weekend in uh, 253 in the first version of the Adios Boost version. So, but uh, in, in more recent editions of the um, Adios and Boston, they, they, the sizing started to become a bit short. Um, in the Adios 3 and Adios 4, I just basically couldn't fit into them in my 12 and a half. So I had to abandon them in favor of, um, I went to Nike basically with the Turbo 2, obviously the 4% and the next percent. So then I saw that, uh, the sizing may have improved, so I picked up a pair of the Adios 5 and also I got the Adios 4. I hadn't run into them that much, to be honest, but um, realised that they probably would have actually worked for me again. I then noticed that Adios, Adidas would bring out a new shoe called the SL20, uh, which is kind of styled as a sort of a... I don't know, it's hard to say. Is it a Boston replacement? Because they still got the Bostons. It's not really an Adios replacement. Um, so I picked up a pair and I got them on feet and here they are. Nice black pair, of course, with uh, with a nice gold side. There's a few colorways that you that they do. You always got to get a, a pair of black Adidas shoes, haven't you, really? Although there's no white stripe in these ones. So I've just done a little uh, mile and a bit on the road in them, and um, the good news is I quite like them. Um, the other good news is that they only cost £100 retail, and I managed to find a 20% off um, voucher at Running Hero, so that brought the actual cost price down for me for 80 quid which is basically then half the price of the turbo twos that i've been doing most of my regular training in for the last year or so so that's um that in itself is a very good sign they're um they're, pre they're perhaps a bit softer than i can recall in the, in the adios 5 although the shoes are so similar in fact these are actually slightly bizarrely actually slightly lighter i weighed them in at 268 grams in my size 12 and a half uh in the sl20s and 274 in the same size in the Adios 5. So that in itself is quite interesting, how a shoe that's not really meant to be an out-and-out -out racing shoe is actually lighter than a shoe that is, is their racing shoe. Um, so that was good. Um, quite a, sort of a soft feeling, but not as soft as, say, the Zoom X in the Turbo 2 or the Next Percent. So it felt like you would say there's sort of a bit of responsiveness come cushioning, so perhaps a good blend. A bit hard to say, obviously, from just a mile and a half run down the road. They come up um, reasonably um, accommodating for my narrow feet and I've had to pull them in a bit so I think although Adios um, Adidas shoes are also notoriously probably the narrowest of all the shoes that I've ever worn that's probably why I like, like them um, they certainly would fit a, a more wider foot than mine because I've had to as I say pull them in quite a lot although they, I feel like I could pull them in more if I really wanted to uh, there's a bit of room at the toe box I feel like there's not quite as much room as say my UK 13s and Nikes but these are only a 12 and a half probably Adidas don't actually do a 13 and Nike don't do a 12 and a half so that's partly why perhaps I've had a few problems with Adidas over the years and my, as my feet have got slightly bigger as I've got slightly older and flatter maybe and the sizing becomes more of an issue but uh, these seem okay um, so that's promising um, so I think I'll uh, do a few more runs and I'll report back after that with a bit more of a feel but if you're certainly looking for uh, looking for a new shoe and don't want to spend too much money I'll certainly take a look at the SL20 because very lightweight you could probably do everything in these um, from you know your, your racing to your training probably I wouldn't race in them but uh, because you've got, you've got things like the next percent but um, certainly an option for training is definitely worth considering so let's get back to the car it's getting a bit cold now typically it's been raining again um, 
you need a bit of the wind. I'm out in the countryside. So we'll report back in a few weeks uh, with, with the reports on this. I'll also do a uh, further update on my Seville Marathon last weekend, which went very well in the end. 2.56, uh, 53 on chip time, when I've actually got my chip time. Had a bit of an incident with that, but uh, delighted to get a sub three. It wasn't my worst time ever in a marathon, but uh, you know, I'm getting on a bit now, 53 now. So, so that was, you know, I think I've dropped down because I was aiming for a sub three. And uh, maybe on to the next one in uh, maybe some training in these Adidas shoes. Okay, see you, see you soon then. Bye.